Hi everyone, this is Kenzie. Put on your PJs and take your fucking Flintstones because I want to bring you back in time, no Pitbull. We have to go back in time. <laughs> you remember that day when one of your favorite games came out? Your Spyro, your Crash, your Naruto Ultimate Ninja 3, and your mother, father, guardian, creepy uncle went out and got you one of those games and you played it forever, yeah, I'm sure you thought these games would never get any better. Because back then, it wasn't ever about how bad a game was or a game being buggy, no. You, you played it regardless. I'm sure you look back on those days fondly, but then your goofy ass decided to get older. You start developing opinions. You begin to perceive and be aware. And at some point, you want to separate from all the difficult life shit, slip on those pink lensed Ray-Bans, and just play your favorite game from back when you were still developing a sperm count. Well, look no further, because your favorite non-specific game company is responsible for remaking your cult classic game, um, Annabelle the Adventurous Axolotl. This is an example of what I am calling a rose-tinted remake. Yes, I googled that to make sure I didn't steal this. Yes, I didn't. Not all remakes are remade the same. There's remakes that seek to remake the entire concept of the game as it would have been back in the day without those limitations like Final Fantasy VII Remake. And there's the kinds that just kind of dress up the game a bit in a new graphics engine and change some things around like destroy all humans, which I would call a remaster, but remaking something about the game puts it in the remake category by default for me personally. In the middle of those kinds though are the ones that are basically engineered to get sales off of the sole fact that it's selling your childhood back to you with added bells, whistles, and enhancements. And after a bunch of Annabelle sequels and spinoffs that changed up your favorite formula, buying the Annabelle remake is a no-brainer. But then you get to the part that really makes or breaks. You buy it day one, you slip it into your console that you only use for Netflix and YouTube, and you turn it on only to find that the intro song is different, the art style is not really how you were wanting it. And after a couple of hours of playing, you kind of just settle into the mindset of Annabelle just don't hit the same, does she? It's my stress, that's for sure. Here's what we're gonna do, y'all. I'm gonna look at a few select rose-tinted remakes and lay out just what they do in comparison with their retro counterparts in order to exploit that particular flavor of nostalgia. Yes, bitch, these games are retro now. Ain't that shit crazy. This video is gonna be draped in my own opinions and observations, so just keep in mind that this is my video and I'm gonna be talking my shit, just saying. Now let's start off small with the biggest game in the rotation and the game that this video was originally gonna only be about. Persona 3 Reload. Are you stupid or something? More like stupid fa So Persona 3 Fest is an extremely important game to me. I discovered this game at the exact same time as Star Ocean 3 and Dragon Quest 8, but that's a different story. For the longest time, I thought that Fest would never get a remake, let alone a rose-tinted one. Even though Portable changed a lot gameplay-wise, it, it really wasn't my jam. And that's saying a lot, because if they ever gave me a choice, all of these bitches would be women. On sight! Persona 3 Portable getting ported to Steam was about the last dose of hopium I had, and even though I wasn't fiending for a full-on remake that bad, I wanted to see my favorite Persona game get more love than that, at least. In retrospect, all I really ever wanted was a rose-tinted remake. I didn't want them to change the way time worked. It gave you a solid amount of days. You only went to the dungeon area at one specific time of day, so you could do two social links a day if you wanted to. And overall, it just felt great to live life in that game and take your time. I think Persona 3 Fest is a game that holds up already and essentially only needed mechanic updates in ways that Portable kinda already did, but with a new coat of paint. Persona 3 Reload though? Yeah, it's here, and it's been here for a while. And yes, it's literally everything I could have ever wanted, and guess what? I wasn't satisfied. <laughs> no, 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 I love it, and everything I could even begin to dislike is a minor, minor, minor nitpick at best. I genuinely think it's an amazing product, and it deserves all of its success. This game passed the vibe check, but I do believe the original game's art style was more fitting for the game's themes. As far as my rose-tinted gimmick is concerned, I was fully expecting the models to be right there alongside the Catherine Persona 5 aesthetic, and I'm nowhere near a hater of that art style, but I think the cleanliness of Reload isn't exactly what I would have done for it. And that's totally fine, yo. I'm not an art director or anything, but I do prefer the more rusty dusty art of Fess. Yes, even Yukari. Also, the music has mostly been redone with there being some brand new tracks and pretty much all of them are fucking excellent, but I do have some I don't like as much as the originals and vice versa. Not saying that they are better or worse, but just different and the differences matter to me. Changing seasons adds lyrics and harmony. To
The dorm music is irreplaceable to me in Fest. And When the Moon's Reaching Stars is my jam. I don't like it as much in Reload. In general though, most of the music is fine. It, it pretty much builds off of the previous tracks and they do a good job. I have nothing bad to say about pretty much any of it. Like I said earlier, it's low key some hyper specific shit that most people probably don't even think about like this, but I do. Everything else in Reload is reloaded in the most literal sense. This is Persona 3 as they probably would have made it back then. And yes, there's no Fem C in the answer yet. But the turn-based battles have been juiced the fuck up. The social links have voices now. All of the voices for the main cast have been reloaded too. And they basically all sound the same, if not better, with the exception of Akihiko, who doesn't sound worse or anything. He's just different. And I prefer Gara over Sino. That's just how I am on that one. A large part of Persona 3 Reload existing is the fact that out of all of the Persona games that we have, besides 1 and 2, those are kind of an exception. Those need to get reloaded, like, instantly. Persona 3 was the one that needed the upgrade the most. Yeah, Persona 4 doesn't have its reflipped, refogged. But for the longest time, it had the changes that Persona 3 needed, and I think a lot of people were okay with Persona 4 having golden and a PC port. But if it gets a full-on rose-tinted remake, I'll be there to see it too. If any one of these games would look good in the Persona 5 shiny, clean girl, bombastic aesthetic, it's four, hands down. Persona 3 Reload is the one game on this list that is low-key the most loose example of what I'm talking about. Because while the game has the same story beats from left to right, it changes almost every single thing in between while remaining scarily true to its roots. This game has Persona 3 fans in a chokehold, and for good reason. It's Persona 3, but Persona 5 duck. And if I were to ever take off my rose-tinted gunner gaming glasses, then I'd probably not give a shit about the thing I don't like as much about it. Now on this next game, I'm gonna have to hold some diabolical positions because I'm gonna talk about Pokemon Shining Pearl. And oh baby, if you thought I was capping for Persona 3 Fest, then bitch! Prepare for trouble! Make it double! Here's the thing about Pokemon as a franchise. I don't fuck with it anymore. My last Pokemon game I actually looked forward to and bought on release was Black and White. And to be honest, they are getting to the point where remaking these games would probably only be making them worse. Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire I bought off someone on Twitter a couple years before COVID and it was cool but as far as I'm concerned I preferred the original simply because I feel like they just added too much shit and I didn't really care about it that much. Yeah sometimes I'm stuck in my way so allow me to make you feel worse. Pokemon Shining Pearl got revealed and even after I saw how the game looked I bought a Switch Lite specifically for it because I didn't even fucking want the option to play my favorite handheld Pokemon game on anything else other than my fucking handheld screen, bitch. I love the direction they took. Yes, I am probably the one and only person on the face of this earth that loved the decision to keep the game exactly the way it was, but stylized in 3D. A rose-tinted remake this is, and god damn I was a sucker for it. I honestly thought that Gen 4 was untouchable, and so are my memories. Gen 4 is sacred for so many people, me included. The music is timeless, the graphics for the time blew my fucking balls into the fuckosphere, and to be frank, I wanted none of it to be changed by modern Pokemon standards. Is it unreasonable? Maybe. But damn, dude, I love the DS game, and I don't love change. So yeah, ripping Pippi, baby. On release, it was super obvious they were going for this, this is Gen 4, exactly how you remember it. Please buy it. And I got hooked right there on the bait. What does this game do differently, though? Let's unpack it. I played the beginning of Pokemon Pearl for this video, but the version I grew up on was Platinum, and let me not glaze Pokemon Shining Pearl too much, okay? I think multiple versions are lame and I always have. I don't do competitive Pokemon or any nerd shit like that, I don't breed or plan my teams, bitch, I start with the fire Pokemon and I catch what the fuck I see and level 100 my starter in every single one with no diversions. Dressing up my character does nothing for me because to me, this is Dawn, and yes, I would have much preferred Dazzling Platinum or some shit but that small indie company game freak just couldn't fucking help themselves. Now, with that being said, the intro for the original hits exactly the same. The intro is basically one-to-one -one in Shining Pearl. Yeah, this is capitalizing hard off of nostalgia. They walk the same way, follow the same visual beats, and yes, it's the same. I love how it looks. Oh my god, I think it's great. Look at the fucking lightning, look at it! All right, so since I'm emulating, I am making the conscious decision to not speed up anything for now because a DS can't fucking do 
that shit, so I want it to be legit for now. This makes me realize that I just don't have the patience for Pokemon that I used to have. The hand holding and snail's pace of everything from the beginning and all of the slow ish animations are just not for me anymore. Who would have thought that I would have gotten more hyperactive with age? Holy shit. Also, this is a modern game, so now you can change Dawn's skin color. Not a bad option at all, and I think that's great for little kids who want to make their character look like them. But Dawn is Dawn to me. I changed the color just because, but I definitely just see Dawn with black skin. We ain't got hair like this. There's cute little details from the DS game that I largely didn't think would make it, but they did. Like the iconic big thud from Barry smacking into you. But with the added animation, I just think it loses some of its charm. Because while yes, there is more animation, he still just kind of stops like in the DS game doesn't really put his hands up or anything, and I get it, make it one to one, but I think that they either didn't full send on being the same enough, or full send on being different enough. Obviously they added some small quality of life throughout the game, like having the running shoes be automatic, but the little things just have it looking like they didn't try hard enough. Yes, I love this art style so much, it's closer to my heart than my future children, but with that obvious bias I have to call out the goofy parts. The camera sweeping around the models during cutscenes, making it look like some kind of glossy diorama could be charming but it gets old to me personally because after a certain point it looks more cutesy than them trying to nail the feel of the original games. The original games look the way they did because they were trying to push the limits of the DS. In this game it just doesn't seem like they tried enough. And yeah while I liked it they should have just given the people what they wanted and just made a full-on remake because the rose tint can only make this look like the game I fell in love with that Sunday morning for so long. To answer the question about this one no they did not do it right. Their first mistake was capitalizing off of two versions. The next mistake was being way less valuable than the version everybody wanted. Now, with that being said, next game is Final Fantasy Crisis Core Reunion, and oh, fuck, it's good. What is it you're after? World domination. That's not even funny, man. So check this out, right? This is the one I have the least experience with as a kid, but I did like it. But going back to it nowadays is kind of hard. Not because the PSP game is bad or hard to play or anything, but because it went through a bit of a transition and now it's a better version of its former self. This is the right way to do what Pokey didn't. Crisis Core was always a beloved game, probably not as much as Gen 4, but Final Fantasy doing what Shining Pearl did was always gonna work out in their favor. There were heavy limitations, and even then, this is a full featured Final Fantasy game that played well more or less. The combat system is like, uh, I don't really know how to describe it. It's kind of like Kingdom Hearts, but way more grounded. It, it's a low-key clunky system with the added context of the RTR existing. RTR is Rose Tinted Remake, by the way. But in a vacuum, it's not nearly as bad. You select attack and he attacks once, and you keep selecting attack to keep on attacking, but it's more like dialing in a slow sequence of events. Every action you take is like this, whether you're using cure, an item, or just regular attacks. And to be honest, it doesn't feel great, but back in the day, it was okay. Also, there's no right stick camera control, and while that isn't an insane thing for PSP games to lack, it is here and it is a detriment put on the game by the hardware, but not a knock on the game itself, because the game is built around it. The environments are pretty simple, but effective, and there are a decent amount of areas, including the story places. This is a cute little game that you can play in your apartment because bitch, where you going? That's what I thought. Now, Crisis Core Reunion is like, <laughs> it just fixed everything. Not only does the added camera control and graphics improvements add an amount of depth to a handheld game I didn't even think was possible, but also the combat system is amazing. If you know where that came from, let me know in the comments. Now, it's not 100% perfect, but bitch, Germex only kills 99.9% .9 of germs and you still use it, so here you go. The combat received a complete overhaul, now being a more traditional action RPG system. The hits are fluid, and get this, the animations are cancelable. And not only that, bitch, but the cancel techniques that aren't magic do increase damage if part of a combo. I love this. You know, if I didn't know any better, the slightly stiff yet slightly free-flowing combat system, canceled attacks, increased combat, Combo damage. This is a Star Ocean 3 video now, baby! We won! Star Ocean 3 gang on top, motherfucker! We in this bitch for life, baby! <laughs> anyway, it's so fucking addictive. Almost, almost as addictive as Star Ocean 3 when it clicks. I can't praise this enough. Taking full advantage of the new cancel mechanics on top of the randomized buffs and randomized super attacks, it makes for a much better combat experience. Not to mention that this being part of the Final Fantasy Remake ecosystem, all of the menus are redone and more made in the image of Final Fantasy 
2007 remake, and it is so much better for it. But wait, I am calling this an RTR, right? It seems like they did nothing but change everything. And while that's true, the game at its core is so fucking similar to the original that it's pretty much accepted as in between a remaster and a remake. But I think Rose Tinted fits here better because it's the exact same game cutscenes, animations, and all with a nice squeegee. The one thing that they did change was Zack's VA, which would be an issue for me if I were more familiar with the original. Hey, like, please, please get on your knees, hey, cause I need you to die. So I played through Demon Souls on stream about a month ago, and I'm currently playing through every Souls game, and I stream every Wednesday. And at the beginning of that game, you fight a boss called Phalanx. And the song that accompanies it is very catchy, soft yet impactful, and it really does its job at setting the tone for boss themes. Demon Souls Remake is a rose-tinted remake in a similar sense as Shining Pearl, but way more passionate and well put together. Animations look different, but mechanically, at its core, it's the same game. Now, I haven't played the remake, I own it, it's on my account, but even working at GameStop all those years ago, I couldn't get a PS5 to complete that puzzle, and bitch, I don't even want it no more. But regardless, the music is accessible to everyone. My playthrough of Demon Souls PS3 was like Ray Charles. That means blind. And I really like that song, and listening to the remake's rendition of it... I think they understood what was so good about this song, but let me try to explain it. Phalanx's original track has a softness to it like I mentioned earlier. Phalanx as a boss isn't very intimidating either. It's a blob of shit covered in blobs of shit that have shields and spears to protect the big shit. It's more of an experience than a boss, to be honest. It is the first boss. It's an introduction. You can introduce things in multiple ways, and the remake chose to introduce the game in a powerful sounding way, while the original chose to be more subtle, focusing on the quieter melodies and slowly building up over the progression of the track. In a vacuum, the remake's rendition is fine, but it reminds me of the difference between Bowser's Road and Koopa's Road. In case you don't know what it is, you do. This is Koopa's Road. And this is Bowser's Road. Funny thing about these two is that they both sound excellent and Bowser's is basically a rose-tinted remake of the song. It keeps all of the iconic moments from Koopa's but enhances them in a way that doesn't feel like it's just an epic orchestral remix of the original. With that being said though, I do prefer the original as a song to be used in a level Koopa's is more subtle and incredibly catchy, while Bowser's is more on the epic side, but in both contexts, the, the songs are fine. Side note, but Bowser's Lava Lair is also a thing. <laughs> basically more in line with Demon's Souls remake version of Phalanx, changing the sound in a definitive way and going away from how subtle the original and Galaxy 1's version is. I kind of forgot that Galaxy 2 had its own rendition, my bad, but it still does what Demon's Souls remake failed to do in my opinion. It keeps the soul of the original piece it's referencing. Demon's Souls remake went the epic orchestral made in Unreal 5 route and completely changed the entire vibe of the thing. This sounds like I'm fighting Tuco fucking Salamanca, not these minority pac -Man and ghosts. Now I know it sounds like I'm complaining about something sounding cooler, but in this case, less was more. It really didn't need to be this insane. And from what I understand, they did this throughout the whole game. Demon Souls is a somber game. It makes you mad by just being itself. It never stuck its branch out to trip you. It's just a place with a bunch of branches for you to trip over, if that makes sense. Overall though, Demon's Souls is a great game that still holds up to this day and the remake is appreciated by many. I just wanted to touch on the music a little bit. And that's how these specific remakes exploited you and made you spend money just to recapture the magic from the time in your life where you didn't have to take normal pills. And if you do to this day, then, oh, I'm so sorry. It'll get better, okay? That's all for now. Be sure to like, subscribe, and tell me what you think. And check out my Patreon, please. They get early access to videos at the $5 tier and at 10, they will be getting exclusive content and request priority. If there's a game you're curious about what I'll say about it and you want to hurry my ass up, well, there you go. But till that day, stay safe, stay hydrated, and most importantly, stay cute. You lovely, you just lost the game.